antimicrobials. So everything that's on these slides are what you're going to need to know to help you pass the test. So penicillin, bactericidal, a cell wall agent. The suffix is C-I-L-L-I-N. There's four groups, natural, broad spectrum, which is like amoxicillin, you give that with food. There's beta-lactamase resistant, then there's potentiated, which would be amoxicillin with clavulonic acid, or also known as clavamox. Cephalosporins, these are bactericidal. They have the prefix of ceph or CEF. There's four generations of those. Remember that the higher the generation, the less likely that it will be broad spectrum. They can be nephrotoxic, so you need to use caution. Then there's some other cell wall agents, polypeptides that are topically used like bacitracin and polymyxin B. Uh, vancomycin is a glycopeptide. Uh, carpopenems, these are beta-lactams, and then there's monobactams. Protein synthesis agents, these are bacterial static. They interfere with the formation of 30 and 50 ribosome units. Uh, aminoglycosides, this one that you would use would be called genesin, can be given topically as well as peritoneally. There's tetracycline, it has the cycline suffix, prefix, I don't know what you want to call it, the ending there. Um, it's short acting, water soluble is tetracycline, intermediate is demicloisocilid. Long-acting liposolids is doxycycline, and you shouldn't use these in younger pregnant animals because that causes the calcium to bind, and it'll bind to the teeth and bones, it'll stain the teeth, and it'll cause um, issues with the bones growing. We use these to treat rickettsial diseases like Lyme disease. Protein synthesis agents, chloramphenicol, we do not use this in food producing animals. It is bad, it causes aplastic anemia in humans. It can penetrate eye and CNS tissue, the blood brain barrier, so it makes it good for us to treat second line defense in small animals. We wanna make sure you use gloves when you're using this. Fluoramphenicol, you need to watch for withdrawal times. There's macrolids like erythromycin, and azithromycin, and then there's lincosamides. And lincosamides, those drugs would be called lincomycin and clindomycin. So think about that. Antimetabolites, these uh, deprive essential materials needed for metabolism, and these are sulfonamides. It's not really a true antibiotic. It inhibits the synthesis of folic acid was widely used before penicillin, and now it's used for treating coccidia um, and protozoan infections. The suffix is sulfa. It can cause KCS, which is keratoconjunctivitis sica or dry eye, and crystal urea, so the urines and the crystals. Nucleic acid agent bacterias, cytals, <clears throat> these inhibit the DNA formation of the bacterium. These are fluoroquinolones, okay? They have the suffix, prefix, I don't know what you want to call it, uh, floxacin. You should not be using these in young animals. High doses can cause blindness in cats. And then there's um, nitromidazole, nitroimidazoles, and this drug is called um, uh, mitronidazole, mitronidazole. And it is an anti it's an antibacterial and an antiprotozoal, and it works well with coccidia. You can um, use this. You want your clients to let you know if they start to see some signs of um, ataxia seven to ten days post use. And that is all. Here is my question. Please answer. Bye.